It measures a higher peak brightness than the LG G3 and Samsung's S95C, but does that mean that the Panasonic MZ2000 is the best HDR TV of the year? Let's find out. Hello and welcome to another video on AV Forums. I'm Phil Hinton, the site editor, and I'm a fully trained ISF and THX calibrator with 20 years of experience. In this video, we're looking at the Panasonic MZ2000 OLED TV. The MZ2000 is available in three screen sizes, starting with a 55 inch at £2,699, a 65 inch at £3,599, and there's a large 77 inch model at £4,500. The 77 inch model does not feature the MLA equipped panel, instead it has the same OLED panel as the MZ1500, which features a heatsink but no MLA. The TV we are reviewing is a 55 inch set which was provided by Panasonic UK and it's a brand new unit in a retail box. If you're familiar with the last five versions of the 2000 flagship, you'll know exactly what the MZ2000 looks like. It has a lower panel soundbar, side firing speakers on each end of the panel which are three quarters of the way towards the top and the up firing Atmos speakers are positioned in the rear central position at the top of the panel. The sound system is tuned by Panasonic company Technics. There's an excellent wide sound stage for music reproduction from the LCR setup on the soundbar and when you switch to immersive movie soundtracks that's extended again with a decent attempt at psychoacoustics creating a believable surround effect. Obviously there's no rear speakers so it's not genuine surround sound but with all the speakers placed on the TV it's certainly more front heavy than surrounding listener but with the correct placement within a room the effect does work well. The MZ2000 is the clear flagship model offering multi-layer heatsink and MLA technology within its master OLED ultimate panel. While the second tier MZ1500 gets the front facing soundbar speaker and the lesser Master OLED Pro panel with heatsink but no MLA. We do get support for HDR10, HDR10+, HLG Hybrid Log Gamma, there's Dolby Vision and Dolby Vision IQ high dynamic range formats which makes this one of the very few OLED TVs on the market that supports all the relevant flavours. Plus you get colour accuracy thanks to the usual professional ISF modes, Netflix calibrated mode and filmmaker mode for easy one button press simplicity. Gaming has become a new priority for Panasonic which is looking to not only offer the best movie viewing experience but also offer up next gen console gaming with cinematic image quality thanks to the new true game picture mode. This setting switches off all the unnecessary processing to get the best input lag and switches on the important features like VRR while presenting the image in SDR and HDR with the accuracy to the standards that most games are now produced in, which is the same standards as TV and movie content. You also get two HDMI 2.1 40 gigabit per second inputs that support Dolby Vision Gaming to 4K 60 with further support for 4K 120 HDR10, NVIDIA G-Sync and FreeSync Premium VRR, there's ALLM Auto Low Latency Mode, EARC and HDIG support. We measured the input lag at 9.3 milliseconds for 4K 60 and 5.7 milliseconds for 120 Hz. We go into picture quality measurements in detail within our written review on AV Forum, so head over to read all the details on the out of the box and calibrated results there. We fully measured and tested the out of the box settings as well as calibrating the MZ2000 and put it through some rigorous testing, including side by side comparisons with its closest rivals. If you want to know what the best settings are out of the box, then you can also check out our settings video. The MZ2000 measures in at 1426 nits on an industry standard 10% window and 206 nits full screen in the most accurate filmmaker mode. This is around 65 nits brighter than the 55 inch LG G3 on a 10% window and is the same 100% result full screen. Compared to the 55 inch Samsung S95C, the Panasonic is around 86 nits brighter at 10% and around 65 nits darker at 100% full screen. However, with peak brightness you're never going to physically see those differences due to how our eyes work and each manufacturer applies slightly different tone mapping techniques. So it's an interesting aside but it has no real indication on HDR performance. Moving to PQ ERTF tracking to ST2084 
and the Panasonic follows the standards in filmmaking mode and doesn't push brightness over the top. We also get slightly different tone maps depending on the mastering display metadata with 1000 nits tracking accurately to the peak brightness and then it hard clips. The same is true with 4000 nits master content with just a slight roll off before a hard clip at the peak brightness in an attempt to keep highlight details without bringing down the overall APL average picture level by any great amount in isolation. Wide colour gamut performance to DCI-P3 is also good, but we would like to see it a little bit better. You can see a few saturation points are not quite where they should be with any DCI-P3 standard, namely an oversaturation of red, a slight 75% oversaturation of green, and a slight hue error in magenta. However, these issues within the graph are less obvious with actual HDR10 viewing content. The red saturation is the only issue we could see within reds and skin tones with film content. They just looked a little bit too rosy, but it was nothing that would be a deal breaker in any way. The S95C is much worse at pushing red, for example. We measured BT2020 at 75% XY and 77% UV, with P3 coming in at 98% XY and 99% UV. Moving to screen uniformity, displaying a 5% brightness slide, we noted some very faint vertical bands visible when in a pitch black room. Watching a dark scene in a movie in a dark room didn't highlight this issue. We only noted it when we were looking at the black slides. So for normal TV and film viewing, there's nothing visible. All the other slides at different brightness levels were very clean with no signs of dirty screen effect DSE or vignetting to the panel edges. When viewing the TV from very wide angles, we also didn't notice tinting to the panel edges. With 24 frames per second content, the MZ2000 is capable of correct motion reproduction with 5.5 pull down applied with ISC off and accurate IFC left switched on as default. Broadcast content at 50 Hz was also good with no frame skipping or micro stutter, even with fast cuts or camera movements. Applying IFC does introduce soap opera effect in the higher settings with over smooth motion and artifacts seen around fast moving objects. So we advise that you keep it off. Black frame insertion is also unusable in my opinion. It introduces just too much flicker and image dimming as there's just an on off option and a 60 Hz refresh rate. Watching lower resolution content from SD channels is decent with very good upscaling being applied, but you know, let's face it, it can't work miracles with the poorest of sources. DVD is very good and HD content can look excellent with superb sharpness and detail retrieval without applying any unwanted edge enhancement. Straight lines are clean with no signs of ringing or false edges. Moving to SDR content and the MZ2000 looks incredibly cinematic thanks to the excellent accuracy out of the box when calibrated. Blacks are deep with just a hint of just above black crush within some content but shadow detail retrieval is excellent adding real depth to the image. Colours are bright and natural with very good skin tones that can look just a little bit rosy from time to time out of the box but are incredibly accurate following calibration. Dynamic range is superb as you would expect from an OLED and the MZ2000 will work just as well in a bright room as it does for dark room critical movie viewing thanks to MLA technology. Moving to HDR10 and again the MZ2000 offers up some excellent cinematic images with real pop and colour thanks to MLA. Peak highlights look stunning against accurate and bright colours. We didn't see any instances of colours looking washed out or dim in comparison with its peers, with superb tone mapping allowing shadow detail to add some real depth to the image. Midtones are also strong and detailed, which adds to the three-dimensional feeling of images. There are a few negatives on display from time to time, with a little posterization seen around bright objects such as the sun in the sky and certain HDR discs that we viewed, and there's some floating blacks and flashing with lower bitrate content. There's also no smooth gradation filter accessible on the Panasonic, which could have helped mitigate some of those issues that we noted, which are the same as last year's LZ2000. HLG, HDR10 and Dolby Vision content also look stunning in the majority of cases with excellent accuracy and the cinematic flair you expect from a Panasonic display. MLA really helps to boost the dynamic range capabilities and we really enjoyed our time watching all of our usual test clips and more. 
Dolby Vision Dark is a little bit too dark when you compare it to the same scene in HDR10, but this was the only small niggle that I had in my time with the MZ2000. I didn't use Dolby Vision IQ or the light sensor modes for HDR10 and Filmmaker, but these do work well for those of you who live in very bright surroundings during the day, although I still maintain that the MZ2000 is capable of being used in brightly lit rooms with no issues whatsoever. Overall, the MZ2000 looks incredible with SDR and pushes that even further with some of the brightest HDR images we've seen so far this year. We are about to show you some side-by-side -side comparison shots on video, but bear in mind that these are not representative of what I can see here in person, and they're captured by a camera with a restricted dynamic range. They're then edited and compressed and uploaded to YouTube, and then further compressed and changed by YouTube before you see them on your display, which is probably not calibrated. So it looks different again to what I can see here in person. So these clips really are for illustration only. We also need to thank UK retailer Peter Tyson for making these comparisons possible. They've loaned us retail examples of the LG G3 and Samsung S95C, and that allows us to do long-term testing and comparison with the flagship TVs this year. If you're considering a new TV purchase and you want to help us produce more of these videos in the future, then you could consider buying your next TV from Peter Tyson by going to petertyson.co.uk and the full details are in the video description. Thank you very much for your support. First up, we put the Panasonic up against the LG G3. We set both of the TVs to filmmaker mode and they were tested over a number of days side by side using various content types. Both of these TVs use the same LG Display MLA panels, but with some proprietary multi-layer heatsink technology on the MZ2000. And as such, we see no obvious issues with cyan tint to white because they're side by side and they're both using the same panel. The G3 at first glance is surprisingly brighter in comparison with the same content than the Panasonic, but this points to differences in the tone mapping applied by each manufacturer, with the Panasonic looking more dynamic with better depth and shadows over the brighter G3. Color reproduction with SDR and HDR content was very close indeed between both sets in the out-of-the-box filmmaker mode. But if pushed, I would say that the LG was brighter, but the Panasonic was slightly more natural and realistic. But we're really splitting hairs at this point. With 4000 nits master content, I again favoured the Panasonic presentation here as it was a little bit more colour rich and the tone mapping produced more peak highlight details where the LG was brighter, but it then clipped some of that detail in the process. Things were much closer with 1000 nit master content, where there is less need for tone mapping from the content with these panels. We did notice a little bit more noise within the shadows and gradational issues with low bitrate content on the Panasonic in comparison to the LG. Plus, black flashing was also present, which just wasn't an issue with the G3. Next, we put the Samsung S95C QD OLED up against the Panasonic. Again, we set both to filmmaker mode out of the box and we tested them over an extended period of time, side by side, and with various types of content. The main difference between each of these TVs is the look of white, which varies between QD OLED and WRGB OLED, and this is very noticeable in side by side comparisons because of how the human eye works. Personally, in most cases, I prefer the white produced by QD OLED as it just isn't as cyan looking as the MZ2000 and it just looks that little bit more natural and warmer, giving its magenta push. It certainly comes down to the difference in the panels and their makeup with the white pixel adding that cyan tint to WRGB. However, get either of these screens on their own and you really don't notice the different tints each has when you see them next to each other. It's just how our eyes work. Cutting to the chase with actual pixel quality again, it's really difficult to separate these two when it comes to colour accuracy and grayscale, and it's with other picture attributes that we notice more of the differences. When it's required, the S95C resolves much better colour volume thanks to the use of quantum dots, but in actual film viewing and everyday use, this advantage is not as significant as some may imagine it to be. There's no doubt that having the extra headroom is desirable, but with the current content types, it's just not really called upon that often. 
and I never thought at any point that the MZ2000 looked washed out in any way in comparison with the same content being shown in the S95C. In some respects, I found the Panasonic looked a little bit more natural for colour and skin tones when compared to the slightly overly red looking image on the S95C. But again, we're really nitpicking here, pun intended. Where Samsung really trumps Panasonic is with its gaming attributes with four full bandwidth HDMI 2.1 ports and its slightly better gaming features. But the Panasonic wins out for cinematic image quality, motion reproduction and video processing where the Samsung does look a little bit too digital with an overly processed image and noise reduction being applied. So let's wrap this up. The Panasonic MZ2000 is a superb flagship OLED TV designed for movie fans and it now offers the brightness benefits of micro lens array technology mixed with proprietary heat sinks and it offers up superb brightness and HDR playback. SDR and HDR content is accurate thanks to filmmaker mode out of the box plus there's the added benefit to bright room viewing with the new light sensor and white balance adjustment that follows creator's intent but it also adjusts the image to your environment. Peak brightness and HDR tone mapping match that of the other major flagships in 2023 with excellent HDR10, HLG and Dolby Vision playback that's incredibly bright, vivid and colourful. Gaming is also good with two HDMI 2.1 ports and an improved gaming bar and the accurate true game picture mode. It's not perfect and there are a few slight niggles here and there but overall the Panasonic MZ2000 offers superb cinematic SDR and HDR image quality along with an excellent Dolby Atmos sound system and it certainly lives up to its flagship status. It comes highly recommended. Don't forget the full in-depth review at AV Forums goes into all of this in much more detail so head over and check it out. If you've enjoyed this review then please do leave us a like and if you want to see more TV reviews from AV Forums then why not consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching.